Good evening, everyone. You know what it means. It must be Tuesday night. <laughs> we are here to continue on in John chapter 17 tonight. And this is a good one. Really good one. So, Monty, why don't you start us off? Okay. First one. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glory, glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him all, since you have given him authority over all flesh mm -hmm. to give you eternal life to all, you have given him. And this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Verse 5. Amen. Um, and now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory I had with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the men you gave me out of the world, and they belong to you. And you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. <clears throat> now they understand that everything you have given me comes from you because I have given them the words you have given me and they accepted them and really understand that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. Amen. Okay. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me for they are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine. I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through, through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition and the scriptures might be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. 13. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Amen. 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 Um, okay, yeah. sanctify them by your truth, for thy word is true. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For and for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Amen. 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 21, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in, I am in them and you are in me. May the experience, may they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love me as you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you have given, you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. Verse 25. Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you, and they have known that you sent me. 
I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. Amen. 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 Now we'll just take some time to read over our part. Just a little background for those who might be um, watching this and a little confused because the only prayer we know is the, the prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane and where Christ is asking God to take this cup. But if it's his will, then um, he will do what his father's will is. And he keeps on waking up his friends that fall asleep. And then he goes back and he continues to pray. And so this part is um, the only prayer that is not in the other Gospels. So it's only in, in John. So that tells us that John was there, heard Jesus' prayer. And um, I am not quite sure when he said this. Because John was one of the disciples that did fall asleep in the garden. So <laughs> so if this was the beginning or somewhere in Jesus's prayer. But it's one of the most beautiful Amen. prayers. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Auntie, Auntie Herbie, Jean. Okay. Auntie Sue, you're good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, Monty, why don't you start it off? Okay, verse one. Uh, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. And that part, Jesus spoke these things. He must be talking about, uh, he must be referring to the upper room. They call these the upper room discourses of John 13, chapters 13 through 16. Those where he was just totally speaking with the disciples. Um, and we all know all these wonderful things that Jesus told them, you know, the, um, the let not your heart, heart be troubled. And um, then we also know about the, the denial, I'm not the the prediction that Peter would deny, you know, all that other stuff. And then, of course, Judas. So that's what the um, spoke these things must be referring to. And when it says that Jesus lifted his eyes to the heaven, um, you ever notice how we pray? And I just, you know, I'm, I'm getting this from a lot of the stuff that I listened to um, for this. Uh, for this prayer just because it's such it's um it's kind of overwhelming to me that that there's actually a, a chapter in the bible where jesus prays and we're so privileged to get to see that so i, I just i was just really checking all all sorts of stuff up and um they say that it's a, a tradition for the, the the jewish to pray like this you know, we pray with our hands folded, but for for them mm. to raise their hands up and look to heaven, uh, mm. and that's how what he did when he when he did this. And so he says, uh, "Father, right?" There's a father and son relationship, and John likes to highlight the intimate relationship between Jesus and the Father, um, and. Um, the hour has come. So th this is the important part. Um, this shows Jesus knew the purpose and the timing of his ministry, and he was not overtaken by unknown circumstances. Um, remember, remember the the wedding in Cana, um, where Mary mm. came to him and said, "Son." They have run out of water. And he said, woman, uh, what is that to me? And my hour is not yet come. And all through his life, he was he was conscious of his movement 
towards a definite hour, okay. definite time. And this was always, from the beginning of his ministry, the movement was toward this hour. And uh, many times we read, for, for his hour was not yet come. He, he was always conscious of the hour that was coming. And now he has come to it and he declares, Father, the hour has come. I mean, just imagine that. Um, imagine Jesus finally at the point of what he came for, you know, and it's a, yeah, it's at the same time. It, I mean, it's kind of, um, it's exciting because it's a triumph. And Mandy mm -hmm. had pointed out a lot of stuff last time he said as if he had already gone through it but in a triumphant way and mm -hmm. so this part right here glorify your son jesus always refers to his death in so similar terms and i thought that was um i thought that's special this term also relates to jesus pre-existent deity glorify your son why so that he can glorify his father mm -hmm. And you know, um, the, in the Trinity, uh, but just between these two, one asks for glory that the other may glorify the other, right? It's, it's definitely not something that we could ask, um, but it's the Trinity and, and it's difficult to understand. So be it. None of us are deity, right? Just accept it. Accept that it's not selfish but it's dedicated to one purpose between one purpose of long suffering love long suffering love you know um who was it that said love in the beginning right uh love between the three and jesus actions glorified the father and there there's a good word here uh there was reciprocity right uh the hours come but how is the son to be glorified? How is the son to be glorified? By being lifted up on the cross. And mm -hmm. here, Jesus is talking to the father about the cross, saying, let's go on, let's go on with it. Glorify your son, that in and through the cross, he might glorify God. So verse yeah. two, verse two, <laughs> authority over all flesh. This is an awesome statement by a peasant carpenter. Uh, the term authority is the same is the same one used in chapter one, and it it comes up in chapter nineteen. It it can be uh, translated as a legal right, authority, or power. So, how is the Father glorified? by Jesus granting to you eternal life, citizenship in the heavenly kingdom. Father, the hour is come. Now glorify me. Let me go ahead and bear the cross. Let me die in order that through my death, I might grant eternal life to those, to those who will believe. Mm. And, and as many as you have given me, and that's how he has the authority over all flesh. Do you ever think about that? How does Jesus have the authority over all flesh? It's because his sinless death, he conquered all flesh. And through believing in him, granting eternal life. And that's a that's an interesting term, in eternal life. And this is a term that John likes to use over and over again. But in Acts, we read as many as were ordained to eternal life, what? They believed. Yeah. So to all whom you have given him, the term all whom, um, that focuses on on the disciples, the, the body of Christ, not individuals. And, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because... Um, it, it 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 talks about the elect. You guys ever hear about the elect and and uh, people worry about predestined predestiny. Um, so it 
it focuses on the disciples, the body of Christ, not individuals. Um, mm -hmm. this, this phrase affirms foreknowledge and election. In the Old Testament, because in the Old Testament, um, election was for service, while in the New Testament, it's for spiritual, secure, and eternal salvation. And, and believers, believers are also called to service. And election is not only divine act, but it must it must be um, covenant covenantly linked to mm human -hmm. responsibility, and it's not focused on death, but on life. Uh, and believers believers are chosen for holiness, and not for a privileged standing. So th this phrase should not be understood as the Father giving some humans to Jesus and not others. Uh, so back to uh, the emphasis on eternal life. Throughout the Gospel of John, eternal life is a recurring theme. And um, in verse 2, Jesus speaks of giving eternal life to those whom the Father has given him. And um, this echoes John's emphasis on the concept of eternal life as a central purpose for his mission. So moving along to past verses three and four, where um, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Yeah. So Jesus said, Jesus said that he came to see and to save that which was lost. Um, now he declares his work is finished. On the cross, it was complete. He cried out his last words before commending his spirit to the Father. It is finished. What? Well, the work of redemption for, for man, us. The path back to God is complete. And man doesn't have to be alienated from God any longer. Man can now walk close in close communion close communion and fellowship with the father once again his work of redemption is finished provision for man's sin is now made and um that which separated man from god can be put away and man mm -hmm. can live in fellowship with god so this last verse of, of my section verse five and now O father glorify thou me with thine own self and the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Notice that part where, see, something that I was thinking of, and and um, I was just talking about. Um, I was talking with Mandy. Said she was up at three o'clock. I was up at three o'clock last night for a different reason, and, and for mm -hmm. strange, <laughs> for a strange thing, it was about this prayer. Um, glory. Uh, this verse emphasizes the pre-existence of, of, of Christ. Jesus had revealed glory to the disciples by his signs and miracles, and now the ultimate glory would be his death. When, when you guys think of glory, what do you think of? Do you think of trauma? Do you think of, of um, don't you think like a, of, like a, a of, Sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, like uh, like like a bright a, a light horse, right? Yeah. A unicorn, or just yeah. something, right? You know, but th and I want I want this to sink in for all of us that Jesus saw glory as that death, and you know what that is that that same translation of of glorification means listening to his father it means mm -hmm. obeying the will of his father and um so father glorify me that i can glorify you uh, glorification through john's gospel the concept of jesus glorification is prominent and i um it it's just so Okay, now this is moving on from the first. The first was 
talking about the cross. Now he's talking about the glory in the heavenly kingdom. <laughs> now, Father, the work is finished. I'm going to the cross. It's finished. Now glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So that's why I was bringing that up. Because he who was in the beginning with God and thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, Father, I want to enter back into that glory that I had with you before the world ever existed. I, I have manifested your name into the men which you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and you gave them to me, and that that you've kept word. Now, what does that mean? And I give that to the next person. Verse six. Auntie Herbie. <laughs> That's Auntie Herbie. Hey. It's, oh, all right. <clears throat> that was really good. Thank you, Monty. Thanks, Monty. You know, I was just thinking, you know, you can pretty much wrap this up, this whole verse when I was reading the, the whole chapter, rather, you know, with um, John 3.16. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to wrap it up with that because what he did, what Christ did, I love the part, you know, the beginning part, Monty, when he raised his eyes and he raised and looked at his father and he was praying to his father and he, you know, because he was giving him adoration, he was giving him, you know, all the, all due respect and all, um, you know, um, that complete, attention was on his father you know because he was going to go back to him and i think about you know he was also um you know um christ was also going to glorify he was saying he was going to glorify the father and by that i think it for me it was like um all that time that he spent with his disciples all that time he got them prepared to what they needed to do because he had to go back and the Holy Spirit was coming. And he was showing them who the Father was. Um, right? I mean, he was. He yes. was going yes. to the world who the Father was. And the one and only true God, you know, showing God's reputation, his reputation, his character, everything about who God is. That's what he was going to be doing. And that's what he did. So when he was talking to the father, uh, you know, it was all about getting ready for his resurrection and because his time was coming. Um, you know, when you think about John 3, 16, for God's love the world, he gave us his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him will never perish, but have everlasting life. A promise to all of us, you know. And Jesus was praying on his behalf. He was praying on our behalf on um, the disciples' behalf, and all of us today, is yes. mm -hmm. just before his death and resurrection, and Christ was going to, he was going to complete the finished work, that it is finished, it is done, all bound, and then, and, and um, he was going to go back to his father, and that's what I got on my section, amen. Amen. Thank you. That was beautiful, Auntie Herbie. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Auntie uh, Joyce. Um, one of the things that I've learned just reading and the Bible studies, our Lord, our Jesus, always lift up his father. There was no Amen. time that he ever, the opportunity, he always, always lift up his father. He, mm -hmm. you know, and it, during all the times he was with the disciples, everything, everything was my father, my father. And, you know, I think about how sacred that can be, how sacred our Lord is, and that we as individuals should do the same, that no matter what we say and what we do, it should be always to glorify our Lord, always. There's nothing in this world that we should not because this is what he did with his disciples. We should take that lesson and say, my father, we glorify everything that he says, everything that he's done. You know, because it says, all mine are yours. Wow. Everything from the day one 
to now everything, our Lord, I mean, our, our, our God. Uh, what a what a beautiful um, promise that that gives us to do. That gives us a, a big, a, we got a big job, okay? Yeah. Our job is to glorify our Father. No matter what anyone does or no one, anybody says, our job. Because this is exactly, this this reading right now exactly gives us, hey, come on, get a grip. Let's do it. <laughs> this is our Lord. This is our Father. And he just gives us a good example to, to do what he has said for us to do. Amen. And we Amen. have. That should be our constant prayer. It should be our constant prayer as we come before the Lord, to, and when, as we come before others, that we glorify our Lord. There's, no, there's nothing else more important than to do that. Amen. 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 Um, picking up on the verse 13 to 16, I want to just pick up right where Auntie Dreslin left off. And, and and exactly that he he told his he told his father that he he faithfully delivered the word from God the father he didn't take credit for that he delivered his father's message to his disciples and mm -hmm. so he saw himself as a messenger for his mm -hmm. father he didn't yes. take any of the credit but now as we're coming into Verse 13, it says, now I'm coming home to you. Mm -hmm. It's a turning point right there. You feel like, oh, we're going to change the chapter. We're going to turn the page right here. Things are going to change. He's ready coming home. And his concern on his heart is for his people that is not going with him right now. And he's he loves us so much that he wants us to be filled with joy. Um. And I looked up the definition for joy, and it says that joy is a great pleasure or happiness, a feeling of great pleasure or happiness. But this kind of joy that he wants us to have, he says, I told them about, about you many things while I was with them in this world, so that they will be filled with my joy. That is a joy fuller, um, expressed by God's goodness. The relationship that you share with someone so dear to you, that kind of joy, mm -hmm. ultimate joy. And um, um, and then he says that he, he doesn't, he does, I'm not asking you to take them out of this world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Because he knows, he knows that what the evil the, the Satan is lurking like a lion, ready to devour us. He knows that. And so he is asking the Lord, please keep them safe, protect them, watch over them. Yeah, watch over them. Um, but he doesn't want to take us out of the world. We can't, he, because if he did, it would be a dark place, I would imagine, because mm. his Holy Spirit fills, fills us. And his, his light, therefore, shines through us. So if we were removed from this world, what light would there be left? So we need to stay here, and we need to continue to shine his light. Shine his light in all those dark places. So we're here. We're in this world, but we're not of it. And so it's... Because it would be like uh, like a boat. The boat is in the ocean. It's in the ocean, but the ocean is not in the boat. You know what I mean? Like that. You know, the boat has to belong in the ocean. It has to be there. It has a purpose to transport across the seas, the people, mm -hmm. the food. The boat is so important. You know, it has a big job. But you don't want the ocean to end up in the boat. So yes. I look at it like that's how that's how we we yeah. are. I get it. That's, Amen. That's a, good, that's a great Amen. analogy. Yes. Amen. 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 Sorry, I was writing the note. <laughs> that was good. 
Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Joss. Thank you. Okay. Auntie Helene. Okay, I just kind of assembled my spot with the um the verse that comes from the book of Psalms, you know, 34 it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. And mm -hmm. I just assemble this like in a bunch, like a bunch of grapes that taste so good and so juicy. I love grapes. So, um, and the word tells me here that, you know, sanctification, I think about truth. And it says right here, truth. Sanctify them to thy truth, thy word is truth. So, and, you know, so it's us setting ourselves apart from, for something that is sacred sacred use, you know, and um, that God has given all of us a commission, commission to do every day in our lives, right, which is to go, 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 and tell, 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 so <laughs> we become holy, holy, holy by doing this, so and I love in verse um, 20 that tells me, you know, I never really thought about this, how Jesus prayed for you and I that day, mm -hmm disciples he us in mind i mean he prayed for us personally and i take that to heart because i think wow uh, this is so cool jesus actually prayed that day for me personally mm. so, amen that's my take amen amen amen, amen. 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 auntie sue and so he's also telling them that just as he and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one, as he leaves this world, he also wants all the people, all the believers to be as one, to work together as one. And um, you think of the, the tree, and although there are many branches, they're still all connected to the main part of the tree. And if they're not connected to that main part of the tree, they die. So, you know, that's what he wants us to all be connected to him, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and to work together as one and to show the world they are connected to him. Nice. That's my mm. take. Amen. 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 It's just like the last chapter, right? Remain in me and I in you. Amen. You know, if you remain in me, I am the vine, you are the branches. Yes. Remain, remain, remain. Remain mm -hmm. in Jesus. Um, I just love this chapter. Um, I just there was so many things that blew my yeah. mind. As I was reading it the past couple of days and, um, you know, um, from the beginning of that, uh, from the beginning that Jesus, all he ever wanted to do was dedicate his life to glorify his father, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is just, I mean, that is just so, he, he knew what was going to happen in the end. He knew what he was going to go through, but he was just like, I, I want to show everyone your glory, you know, and, um, and his prayer for his followers that they may know God, glorify God and enjoy him Amen. just as he enjoys his father, you know, and, and, um, like what Monty says, it, it shows that intimate relationship between the father and the son. And mm -hmm. and that's the relationship that we need to have as well. That intimate relationship with our heavenly father. Um, I don't know if you guys um, caught this, but verse six is like when it started to just blow my mind. And it was with the words, the three words, they were yours. Yeah. They were yours. Like two amazing statements that Jesus says, you know, God gave the disciples to Jesus before he gave them to Jesus. They were already his. 
yes. not the father's. They were already his, you know? And it's, um, man, what he says about those who belong to him, he says that about us. You know, we belong to Jesus. And how do we belong to Jesus? God the Father gave you to Jesus. And how is it that the Father could give you to his son? Because we were first his. Amen. We already belong to the Father, you know. And all those who receive the words and know for certain and believe in Jesus Christ belongs to him. Amen. No, without a doubt. And and it, it just blew my mind because Jesus prays for us. He prays for our protection three times. He mentions to either keep them or protect them three times. He mentions sanctify them three mm. times and then unite them three times, <laughs> you know? And I was like, and the only way I noticed it, because I started circling words that looked the same. <laughs> I was mm. like, oh my word, that they, oh, they may all be one. Um. Our churches, like, there's so much stuff getting thrown at our churches. Amen. And this is the time for our church to be one, Amen. to be together. All of all of our churches, you know. Amen. Anyone who believes in Jesus, this is the time that we need to unite because the Lord's coming is so near, so near. And this is not the time for us to do things, be separated, you know. Um, I hate to say this, but watch Sabbath service online, you know, by yourself in your home. This is the time, like, we need to be surrounded by our brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, the Lord is praying for his church that they may all be one. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know the group Acapella. Monty, do you know the group Acapella? I think I should. <laughs> Well, they have a song, and when John and I were reading this um, chapter the other night, John goes, this is where acapella got their song from, that they may all be one. Mm -hmm. And so I'll send a link to you guys of the song, because it's so beautiful. beautiful. Um, it talks about Jesus's prayer. But here's what I, like, it blew my mind. This is, this is what I told John. I was like, ah, oh, am I reading this correctly? You know how it says the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three in one? Yes. Okay. And then Jesus, he says in verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be made completely one. I just thought of something. If the Holy Spirit lives in us, does that mean we are three in one? With the father and the son yes that's what that's what he talks father about in the last chapter the yeah i and you you and me and yeah yes i don't know i just caught it and it like i was like because it took my level of being a daughter of god like up several notches like several hundred notches <laughs> like, <laughs> because of knowing that Wow, that power that we have in us, you yeah. know, that, oh. that. That's why we have to abide in the, in the, the vine. Yeah, abide in the vine. And, um, you know, uh, what secures, what secures us 
is that the father giving us to Jesus secures our coming to him. And when we come to Jesus, he receives us forever. And it says in John 6, 37, all that the father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Mm -hmm. Ah, that is just, this prayer is just mind blowing. And, you know, Auntie Jocelyn, you, you said something about purpose. I wrote it down. That was the note I was, what is our purpose, you know? And um, find a purpose as big as God's. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, God made us in his image to display his glory. Mm-hmm. And so in everything that you do, you do it for the glory of God, to display mm-hmm. God's glory. And so that was just, oh, I just love this chapter. I mean, I could just add, like, that's it. Just read chapter 17. No, <laughs> no, read everything, though. <laughs> Go ahead, Monty. I, I look at it like this. The main takeaway, um, Jesus' prayer in, in this chapter 17, re- is how his plan of salvation works. Um, just like in a nutshell, follow me and you will follow my father, Right. But before you can follow me, I must be verified as worthy of my glorification in my father's eyes. That's what that's why um, Jesus had to be glorified by his father. And then he says, when when I'm not here, you need to be led back to me. And that's the Holy Spirit's job. Mm -hmm. So I guess the the, the important thing uh, to notice, and I think we all notice that, is that what Jesus considers glorification. What does Jesus call his crucifixion? He calls it glorification. And so Mm -hmm. what does that mean? It means that suffering for doing the Father's will is the same as as glorification. And this this is something that, that really got me thinking last night, is that, you know that part where he says, Father, Father, um, why hast thou forsaken me? And Jesus is even though he says that and it's it's totally um it's it's totally appropriate for him to be saying that he is reciting a psalm psalm mm-hmm. 22 when he says father father uh why have you forsaken me my, uh, my god my god why have you forsaken me and the fact that he in his suffering jesus does does that and and then he goes humbly to to the cross. Um, there's a moment of separation that he's going to have with the Father, and you, mm-hmm. we've heard this in a lot of sermons, right? That 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 there's this separation that he has. So the only thing that he had was to fo- to follow his Father, mm-hmm. Father to follow his will, and that's the glorification. So that that all that moment of total separation was preserved by by the glorification of what he had to go through can we can any of us be that way where the pain that that we're suffering the the trial that we go through because we're following the father's will that we're willing to to go to all the way to the end that's that's what jesus prayer reveals to all of us and See how how it starts from himself. So it's like I I I think somebody covered it, but you know how it's it starts at this small this circle of of follow me. And so Jesus prays for himself. Then it goes a little bit further out, the disciples, and then finally all of us. Yeah. So all we, all we need to do is follow the one that needed yeah. to be followed, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yep. And that's that's something that God worked in us to come to Jesus. You know, it's not something that he's seen in us, 
but yeah. something that he himself worked in us to draw us to to Jesus you know yeah. if you think about it and 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 that's amazing because he also still gives us that choice like because it says you know not everyone is in me you know yes not everyone you know but i mean that's that's the choice and so what choice are you making today <laughs> that's the word, <laughs> Andy, that's the word choice is the whole yeah. reason for for love, right? Because if yes. if we don't have a choice, then how can we demonstrate that we really love, right? Yeah. So that's okay. I saw. I think Auntie John. Yes. Thank you. Um, my mom. My mom always used to tell me. See, when I was born, my mom had her tubes tied thirteen years before I was born. Mm -hmm. So when I was born, it's like, whoa, what happened? This is a <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't supposed to be here. So my mom always used to tell me that Jesus brought me, God brought me to them, to mm -hmm. my mom and my dad. She always used to tell me, God brought you to us. And um, so you're so special. And, and I always used to think, wow, I'm so special to my mom and dad. So it was important for me as I grew up and into my adult years that everything that I did, everything that I said, I have to be, I have to be good girl because it's a reflection of Sonny and Stella Ronolo. I belong to them. Mm -hmm. And so that's the name I carry. That's my dad's name. So my character has to be Pono. And then when I look back, when I listen to Auntie, she read, Auntie Jocelyn read 10. She said, all who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me. So they bring me glory. So it's the same thing. Everything that I do, my character, how I live my life will bring glory to God the Father also. Yeah. Just as how it was important for me to make sure that everything I did, I honored my mom and my dad. And so when Auntie read this today, it just it just hit. It hit home. Mm. Yep. It makes you it makes you think the character that you're displaying, you know, because like many of us said, Jesus dedicated his life to glorify his father. Yes. You know? And then now he's like passing that mantle on to us. Yes. You no, know, to make Jesus known to the world. And how do we yeah. make Jesus known to the world? I mean, we can probably just smile at someone you know or just yes. give kind words you know or encouragement to someone I mean there's a there's an old lady that I work for not Mary John another one her next door neighbor and um she's had so much drama in her life that she lives in the past and so she'll bring up all these things like divorce and losing her house. And it's every day when I go there, it's always, and she's just, um, she reminds me of the character Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and so she's, she's just always like that. But um, I've been noticing though, however, that the past couple times that I've gone, she's either did a little laugh at something, and she does she's does not laugh, but she's either done a little laugh mm -hmm. at something, or or she's always asking me about church, mm -hmm. you know. And so then I share with her, and then you know, and then she goes back to her stage stages of the Eeyore-ish stage, but, but I told, I, I was just talking to God and I said, if this is my purpose being here in her house, then may I do it in your full glory, Amen. you know, um, because she didn't even want to open the door at first to me or oh. let me in at first. Oh. 
And now she's, she gets excited. And if I don't show up, she's like, where were you? (laughs) (laughs) So it's, it's coming, you know, I mean, it's there. And, and sometimes we may feel that, man, it's just, it's a struggle or it's, it's impossible or whatnot, but hello, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. We are Amen. children of God. Amen. You know uh, what? What you were saying Amen. Matthew, is that that uh, um, it's our responsibility to show mm-hmm. Christ to the world, and He did put the uh, gauntlet. If you say uh, the world will hate you, yeah. if, you if if you are for me, the world will be against you. So just that alone, right there. I yeah. mean, He prayed for us to be able to present into the world yeah it's not always that easy though you know to portray the character of christ and one of the biggest characteristics that some i I find at times to have difficulty with is the character of forgiveness and i know god said forgive as i have forgiven you sometimes Mm -hmm. it takes sometimes it's hard and Yeah, one of the hardest characters for many, many people, you know, but uh, I I can tell you that um, I think once you have the love of Jesus in you and your whole purpose is to display it, I think the less you tend to get offended by people Mm. because you recognize that you are not fighting against flesh. You're fighting a spiritual battle. Yes. And and when you always meet people or, or have a confrontation with someone, including your spouse or whatever, you know, because we always, that's probably the main people that we probably fight against a lot (laughs) is our spouses. But I mean, I always go with the mindset of this person I'm talking to is also a child of God, Mm -hmm. whether they are Christian or not. And that's the mindset. And there are things people tell me and um that before i before christ i would have gotten mad (laughs) no and then now i'm always like i just go to my knees for them and i just pray you know that god you know soften their heart soften my heart as well and um that my actions they may know you more Mm-hmm. by my actions amen. amen and then i think it makes forgiving people a whole lot easier amen yeah anyways thank you everyone this was a lovely lovely um tuesday night bible studies thank um, you. we would like to see more squares on our screens but <laughs> if anyone is ever interested in any bible study message us or email pastor tim nelson at gmail.com i haven't said that for a long time so <laughs> but um we enjoy teaching but we enjoy learning and seeking God sure. and sharing it with everyone. So Amen. And um, let's see. Auntie Jocelyn, can you close this with prayer? Ikino. Ikulikako. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing our family together tonight, Lord, to study your word, Father. We are so grateful for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you for filling our hearts with thy Holy Spirit, Father. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to guide our actions, our thoughts, Father, and help us uh, that our character may resemble you so that others may come to know you even better, Father. 
We thank you so much, Father. Again, we lift up all those on our prayer list, Father, and we thank you for answering them according to thy will, Father. Thank you so much for your merciful and unconditional love. We give you, Father, all the honor and glory in your son's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 See you all Sabbath or next week, Tuesday. All right. Chapter 18. Aloha. Bye. Aloha.